Hello and welcome to our online morning worship service at Worcester Park Baptist Church. My name is Jeremy and I'm one of the worship team here and I hope and pray that today's service will be a great blessing to you. Well, spring has sprung. We're now in British summertime and today is Palm Sunday, nearly Easter. Things are looking up. Today we continue in the Bible series from the Bible Society with the theme Messiah and Love, which is very timely leading up to Easter. In this service we'll have a contribution from Andrew Ollerton from the Bible Society and an interview with Pastor Abraham from the Korean Church who share our premises for their worship services. And later in the service, Karis, our families and children's worker, will bring us the all age talk and Ian, one of our deacons, will bring us God's message to us. After the service, we invite you to join us for refreshments on Zoom and details for joining will appear on the screen after the final prayer. We would love to hear from you either during or after the service. And you can do this by leaving a message in the YouTube chat, or you can go to our website, which is wpbc.org.uk. And there's just one notice to mention this morning, and that is to encourage you to visit our Baldwin room at the church on Good Friday or Easter Saturday. And this will be open from nine till five, for quiet reflection and prayer, but you will have to book your slot. So check the weekly news sheet for more details. But first let's commit our service to God in prayer. And I'll read from Matthew's gospel about the Lord's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So it's Matthew chapter 21, verse six to nine. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna! To the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So let's come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we welcome you and praise you just as the crowd did in Jerusalem shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we want to give you our worship today and ask that you would renew us, refresh our hearts and minds to be open to your word and your voice and your will so that we may be strengthened and equipped to serve you and to speak your words in our everyday lives. Father, we ask that you would bless everyone who hears this service May it bring glory and honour to your name. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I'll now hand over to Kat and Ali to lead us in singing our first song today, which is Praise is Rising. Hosanna, you're the God who saves us. And afterwards, Karis will bring us today's All Age Talk.
few weeks. How God has created us. We are his masterpiece. How he wants us to live a full and free life. If we know the truth, the truth will set us free. And how God wants to keep us uh, in perfect peace. If we trust him, we will know that perfect peace. Now this week, we're beginning to think about the life of Jesus and what he did for us when he came to live on the earth as a man and then went on to die for us on a cross. This is the story of Easter. And the words we're going to look at today are probably among the most famous words in the Bible. I can guarantee that you will have heard them before. Here they are. Jesus uses these words to explain to a man called Nicodemus what he was and why he had come down to the earth, what he'd come to do, although I'm not sure that Nicodemus really understood it at the time. And we can read Jesus' words in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. These are our words for today. Now the word gospel that I mentioned just in the Gospel of John, the word gospel means good news. And this verse sums up the good news of Easter that John and his friends wanted to share. And it sums up that message that we are celebrating all through this special Holy Week that we're just coming into. The good news is that although we think about Jesus being put to death when we remember that crucifixion on Good Friday, we also go on to remember that three days later, Jesus came back to life again on Easter Sunday. And we remember that he rose from the dead. Now, I wonder if you've ever tried to explain this story of Easter to anyone before. It can be quite tricky, especially if the people haven't heard it, or it's really new to them, or maybe they have heard it, but they haven't really understood what it means to us as Christians and why we're celebrating it. So today, I wanted to show you an easy way to tell the whole story of Easter, and all you need to be able to tell the story is some colours. Now for this, I'm going to use some pieces of coloured card. But I wondered if you would like to do a quick scavenger hunt in the room where you are to see if you can find some things that are these colours, and that can help you tell the story of Easter. So first of all, can you look around in the room where you are and find something that's green quickly look around maybe point to it or if it's not too heavy bring it forward and have a look at that green thing so green is the color that reminds us of living things like grass and trees and plants and green reminds us that god 
made the world. He made all living things, including you and me. Do you remember that we heard a few weeks ago that when God made human beings, he said, they are very good. But then something happened and we did hear about it a few weeks ago and in order to think about it now i need you to go and find something in the room where you are that is gray or black a dark color like this card here can you look around you point to it bring it to the screen something dark brilliant so this dark color represents the things that all of us do or say or think that are not so good. Things that go against what God would want us to do. And every time we do one of these things, basically we're saying, hey God, my way is better than yours. So when we do or say or think anything like that, whether that's at home or school or work, there's usually a consequence. And when we do things or say things that get between us and God, there's a consequence. When we say, God, my way is better than your way, it's a bit like building a wall between us and God. It means we can't get close to him. We can't be his friend anymore. So now I need you to go and find something red in the room where you are. Can you point to it or find it, bring it to the screen? Because the colour red, well, what does red remind you of? I don't know if anyone's ever fallen over and had a bad cut, maybe on your knee or your elbow. And if you have, you will know that the colour of your blood when you bleed is red. So this red colour reminds us of Jesus' blood. You see, Jesus loves us. Even though he'd never thought or said or done anything that was wrong that got in the way between him and God, he chose to take on the consequences of all our bad stuff, all the things that we had said or done or thought. And Jesus did that by dying on a cross for us. And when he did that, he was separated from his Father God. He took that on instead of it being us separated. And because he did that, he made it possible for us to be friends with God again. We could get close to God. We could be friends with him. That wall between us and God was gone. So now, can you find something in the room where you are that is purple? This is sort of pale purpley colour. Look around you, find it, grab it, bring it to the screen. Purple is a very special colour. Purple stands for royalty. And after Jesus died and was buried, we believe that he rose again. And then he went back to heaven to be with God, his father. And there, Jesus is like a king. He's ruling over the whole world. But he's a king that we can be friends with and we can follow him by choosing to say sorry, to say thank you to him for loving us, for trying to stop doing the things uh, that get in the way between us and God. When we do that, when we choose to follow God, we have that friendship with God again. And Jesus is like our King. So the last colour I need you to find where you are is something that is yellow. Nice bright yellow colour. If you can't see it in your room, maybe look out the window. Is there anything yellow outside? Yellow is a happy colour. Yellow is one that makes us think of the sunshine. Now that we're in a friendship with God again, our lives can be full of good things, full of amazing, fun things. The things that God always wanted for us in the first place. We can be truly free and we can live our lives to the full. So, just with these colours, you can explain the story of Easter, the story of Jesus, why he came, why God sent him down to the earth, just with these simple colours. So I wonder, can you do that this week? Can you tell someone the good news of Jesus 
by using these colours. And I know that for some of you, I sent some beads home. Maybe you could use those beads to make a bracelet and have it on your wrist and then explain to people what it means or make it into a keychain and take it out with you. Uh, it's just as a way of saying to people, this is the good news of Jesus. So let's share that good news this week. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for your good news. Thank you that you made us and you love us and you want to be friends with us. Help us to think about this good news for ourselves this Easter time and share this good news with others too. Amen. invited Pastor Abraham, his wife Maria and also Kim from our Korean congregation to just share a little bit with us this morning. 
and we'd love to uh, hear from them all about their views on Easter and how Easter is going to be for them this year. So Maria, just like to ask you to begin with, how would you normally be celebrating Easter with your church if we were not in a lockdown? <laughs> Yeah, usually we have a, a special service for Easter, but uh, is uh, uh, so we have a, a just a, a Easter service, and then we uh, special special suffer for yes everybody every family bring the yes one dishes, and we have a gathering. And then before we have uh, my church, Yongwang Church is very special church for children. So we have a good news club. So we invite uh, every uh, every good news club children invite about uh, three, 30, now is 30 children. Yes, so we have uh, uh, before Easter day, we have a uh, uh, Easter party. So yes, it's the part they have, and then we prepare some games, and then yes, uh, present, and then special preaching. Oh, so they are very exciting mm -hmm. and they're very happy. Yes, with their time, and then usually we uh, Sunday is the Sunday we uh, share the uh, Easter eggs. Easter eggs is, uh, the meaning is uh, joy of the new life. So uh, we bring the uh, boiling, uh, boiling eggs and then uh, sharing that, yes. And then uh, uh, the, that, uh, that means we have not Easter chocolate. Uh, just that we have uh, uh, Easter eggs. The, that means we have a new life in Jesus Christ. So we share the uh, eggs. Wonderful. Thank and, you, Maria. And then but, ch children also make uh, decorating on the eggs or uh, painting. Something like this. Yeah. <laughs> so I bring the, is, uh, I make uh, Easter eggs, for okay. example, there. Oh, yeah. wow. Yes. Lovely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every year I made. So one is uh, two kind of. One is, uh, oh, yes. yes. It's one. a family. Very so, helpful. yeah, give to children, bring to them. And then one is just, uh, yes, like this, it's for adult. Mm -hmm. Children is, yes, it's uh, with the... They're brilliant and they're much more healthy. Yes. Yeah, Jesus is alive. Yeah. <laughs> like this, is right, yeah, yeah right this. Wonderful, wonderful. So, but yeah. this year is going to be a bit different for us, isn't it? And how, how will you be celebrating Easter this year, Pastor, when we're not really able to meet each other in the same way as we would love uh, to? That's right. Um, anyway, um, these days, because of the pandemic, uh, every uh, person is uh, uh, mentally down. So uh, also during this day, these days, we couldn't uh, travel, uh, go back to Korea or some come here. So uh, our church members are getting uh, smaller than before. So it's a problem. So uh, this year we have a plan uh, three churches come together and uh, service together. Mm -hmm. So uh, one church will uh, take part of the um, special dedication stone uh, for the Easter. And uh, the other church will take charge of the um, engineering for the online broadcasting. And uh, the third one uh, maybe take... Um, uh, message preaching was in the other contains something yeah together like this 
And this is uh, our uh, this year plan. Yeah. Worshiping together. And uh, we will do uh, Holy Communion. Yeah. On online together. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. That's all. Yeah. That sounds very powerful. And uh, Gail, I wonder if I can ask you. We've heard about what you would have done and what you're going to do, but what does Easter mean for you personally? Um, Easter is to remember who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for me. He is risen and alive. That's wonderful news. This became real to me around 26 years ago since my dear friend asked me to come and join us. It's, there is a small church, small Korean church, so you'll be happy there, And uh, which is Yongguang Church now at Wooster Park Church. I am thankful that you just accepted me as I was, and then now, still now. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Pastor Abraham. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Kim, for being with us today and telling us a little bit about your church and how you would uh, celebrate Easter, how you're going to, and also some of your own experience of Jesus, too. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace, and truth. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There, 
they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. When he had led them out of the vicinity of Bethany, Jesus lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. You know, if you were a bird flying over a traditional church, you might notice that it's laid out in the shape of a cross. And then if you come into a church, you might notice that at the centre of it all is the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and the cross upon which he died. Now, why is this? Isn't that a bit of a strange thing? That the logo of the Christian faith should become a symbol of brutal execution, the cross and crucifixion. If you were a branding agent tasked with sending Christianity global, that would be a strange choice. And yet that's exactly what's happened because the cross is the symbol of God's love. The Bible claims that we are so loved by God that his son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, died on a cross to set us free and bring us forgiveness and new life. Or as John 3, 16 puts it, perhaps the most famous verse in the whole Bible, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. So the Messiah is God's love in action. In our journey through the Bible story, we've arrived at the center of it all. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, fulfills this story and releases God's love into our lives. You know, we human beings, we need food and water physically, but we need love spiritually to flourish. We need to know that we are loved and accepted. And God's love is poured out to us through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. He is the source of true love. Let's unpack this firstly by noting that the Messiah is the good king. You know, the word Messiah comes from a Hebrew word, which means anointed one. In Israel's times, kings didn't wear crowns, but they did have oil poured over their heads as a sign of God's anointing to be the ruler, the king. Jesus, the Messiah then, Messiah means Jesus, the king, the anointed one. In fact, Christ is the Greek equivalent of Messiah. Christos means anointed one. So Jesus Christ, Christ is not his surname. <laughs> Christ is his title, Jesus the King. He's the good king. When he rules over our lives and this world, it can flourish again. If you've ever seen the Disney film, The Lion King, you've seen an echo of this because that story is about the rightful king being sent into exile by evil Uncle Scar and those nasty hyenas. But when he returns, the true Lion King, when he comes back to the throne, the oppressed land flourishes once more. The arrival of the Messiah in the Bible story is the good rightful king coming to take his throne and through that bringing God's love, 
back that we might flourish. Now, in the Gospels, we see this love in action. We see real people being transformed, people like you and me. Jesus was not just a friend of the religious types, far from it. He was a friend of Mary Magdalene, whose life was very broken with a bit of a history. He transformed her by the beauty of his love. He was a friend of Zacchaeus, who was this miserable, selfish, greedy tax collector, but he transformed his life by the power of his love. Jesus, the Messiah, changes everything. When he becomes our king, he's the good king, and our lives, however broken, can flourish under his rule. Now, for that to be possible, he's also the crucified king. The cross of Jesus Christ is the center of the Christian faith because it's the symbol, the deepest expression of God's love. In the final week of his life, Jesus entered Jerusalem, celebrated by the crowds, but jealously criticized by the religious rulers who plotted to kill him. Eventually, they had him handed over to Pilate and Jesus let this happen. He knew that Judas would betray him, but he let him. He knew the soldiers would arrest him and beat him, but he let them because he'd chosen to love us so much that he would take our evil and sin upon himself and die on a Roman cross, absorbing all our shame and guilt that he might take it from us by taking it upon himself. So the Bible says that Jesus died in our place and for our sins. If you want to know how much God loves you, look at the cross, read the accounts, hear of the six inch nails smashed through his wrists and ankles, This is the love of God, giving itself for us and our world. As the old hymn puts it, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life and my all. He is the good king. He's the crucified king. And because of that, he's the healing king. You know, Jesus was dead and buried in a tomb. But over the course of that weekend, events transpired that have transformed our world By Monday morning, the world was a different place because on Easter Sunday, Jesus arose again. He broke through death and brought a victory to our greatest enemy, death itself. He's given us human beings a victory we could not win for ourselves. Having paid for our sin on the cross in his crucifixion, he rises to give us hope beyond death in his resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the day the world changed. Darkness fell when he was crucified. But in the resurrection of Jesus, a cosmic sunrise has broken over our human story. There is hope for every one of us through the healing power of God's love in the risen Messiah. Right at the end of Jesus' life on earth, he appeared, risen from the dead, to his disciples. On one occasion, he appeared to doubting Thomas. And he said to Thomas in John 20, put your finger here, speaking of the wounds from the cross, the holes in his hand from the scars, and see, stop doubting and believe. Maybe it's time for us to see the scars of Jesus's love and stop doubting and believe that he can heal our brokenness and restore us to wholeness. You know, there's an old Japanese art called kintsugi, which is about taking broken pottery and putting it back together again so it becomes more beautiful and more valuable than it ever was before. The key is the golden resin that is used to join the fragments back together. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, through his death and resurrection, is the master of Kintsugi. He can take the broken pieces of of our lives and through the golden resin of his love, He can make us more beautiful and more valuable than we were before. Stop doubting and believe. Allow Jesus to take the pieces of your brokenness and your life and make something beautiful out of it again. This is his great love for us. Jesus, the Messiah, gave his life for us, or as John 3, 16 puts it, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your one and only Son, so that all who believe in him 
may have eternal life. Thank you that he became incarnate so that he could be among us. Thank you that he showed us your character and how much you love us. Jesus, we thank you for showing us the way. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for loving us, no matter what we have done or who we are. We thank you that you bring healing, forgiveness and life in all its fullness. We ask for your forgiveness when we have not listened to you, when we have not acknowledged you or have forgotten you. We ask that you will take centre stage in our lives again, that we would become more like you as we follow you. Lord, we thank you that you have conquered death, that love wins, that you bring hope, that you bring everlasting life. Lord, we ask that our love for you may be renewed, that our hunger for you be rekindled, that our thirst for you may be felt again, so that we may drink from the water of life. Father, we lift to you now someone we know who needs your special touch on their life today. We name them in a few moments of silence. Thank you, Lord, that you hear and answer our prayers. We pray all these prayers in the precious name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Thank you, Jeremy, for leading us. For the last few weeks, we've been following the Bible Society's Bible series course. And while the course can be run at any time of the year, it's not just a coincidence that we come to this week, Messiah and Love, on this particular Sunday. Because this is the centre, the crux of the whole series. We've been saying that the whole Bible story is there to point us to Jesus. He's the one it's all about. He is God's answer to all the questions and problems that have come up. Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed King, the Saviour of the world. And today is Palm Sunday, the start of Easter week, the last week of Jesus' life leading up to the events of Good Friday and Easter Sunday, when Jesus was crucified and then rose again. The very centre, the focus of his whole life. Just look at how much of the Gospel accounts of his life are taken up with just this one week. So, where have we been so far? We've looked at creation. How God made us for a loving relationship with himself. Given responsibility under him for managing and caring for his creation. Raised up above all other creatures by the privilege of knowing God. Yet how we fell from that position by going our own way, trying to put ourselves in God's place. And yet we've also seen how God started his plan to rescue us and bring us back to himself by the promises he made to Abraham and his descendants. And then Exodus. God saw those descendants of Abraham in a mess, slaves in Egypt, and intervened miraculously to rescue them to set them on the road to the promised land, to make them his own special people and to give them his laws to live by. And then exile. God's people had all these privileges. They lived in the promised land. They had God's law, yet time and again they failed him. They ran off after foreign gods. They worshipped idols instead of the living God. And in the end, they were driven out of the promised land into exile in Babylon. And yet, even there, there was this message of promise and hope. God hadn't forgotten them. He would restore them. He would bring them home again. And then, slowly emerging in the prophets, like Isaiah, 
there was this picture of the coming king, the Messiah. God had said that he would rescue the whole world through his people, but so often they were the ones who needed rescuing themselves. But God would send the perfect Israelite, the true descendant of Abraham, who would be the one to fulfil all God's promises and to bring salvation to the whole world. And when we looked at Mark's Gospel several months ago now, we saw Jesus introduced as this promised Messiah, revealed to an indifferent world through the things he did. And when we looked at Isaiah recently, we saw that there was going to be something more to this Messiah than just a wise teacher showing us a better way. We saw this picture of the suffering servant, someone who would go through great pain, even death, to achieve his goal. Someone who, like the lambs, sacrificed every day in the temple, or the ones whose blood cleared the way for the Israelites to escape from Egypt. Someone who would be the Lamb of God, slain to take away the sins of the whole world. And this was the role Jesus took unto himself. In Mark's Gospel, we came to this key verse, that he came to give his life as a ransom for many. Many might look to Jesus as a great teacher, someone to offer us true wisdom on how to live. And he is all that. But he himself and his followers, the early church, didn't make that the central reason for his being here. Instead, it was this, that he came to offer his life as a sacrifice for sin so that we could be reconciled to God. For anyone at the time, to be crucified was the most shameful, the most demeaning form of death imaginable, reserved for the worst criminals. It is utterly unthinkable that anyone would just tack this on to the Christian faith as an afterthought. It was so repulsive. That surely points to the cross of Jesus being at the very centre of our faith from the very beginning. Indeed, it's been said that alone of all Earth's religions, Christians are the ones who can weep tears of pity for their God when they contemplate all that happened to him. Because what he faced up to on that first Easter was real. It wasn't play-acting or a made-up story. If you want to see that, look at what happened to him just before he was arrested. He went with his disciples to a quiet place to pray, the Garden of Gethsemane. And there the whole horror of what was about to happen to him came on him. And he quailed at the prospect, as anyone would. Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering pass from me. Yet he could not let it pass if he was to complete his mission, if he was to save us. He had to follow it through if we were to be rescued. And true courage is not to be without fear. Rather, it's to face the reality of our fears and to go ahead despite them. <coughs> so you could say that we were there in his mind's eye as he faced that awful moment. Our fate hung in the balance and he chose us. He accepted everything that must happen to him, and he did it for us. So the cross is the symbol of the Christian faith. The fact that it's become prettified or is now jewellery to wear rather hides the fact that it's all about a brutal execution. <coughs> and it's not because we like violence or revel in the gore, but rather that this is the sign for us of how much God loves us, how far he was willing to go for us. And when we feel battered by life, when, when God seems far away and we wonder if he really cares, this is the rock we stand on. That Jesus, knowing what it would cost him, willingly embraced all the suffering of the cross for us, for our sake, because this is how much God loves us. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son, 
so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So, this is Easter week, Holy Week, and we face a roller coaster of emotion. Today is Palm Sunday, and it's easy to stand with Jesus when we're surrounded by the crowds cheering him on. But our path will take us through an upper room where Jesus shared a meal in intimacy with his friends, his disciples. Then through a garden where he confronted the full weight of what was coming. Through betrayal by one of those friends, through mock trials and rejection by his own people. Through a cross and a tomb. And finally to triumph in an empty tomb, risen and free. His mission accomplished, the suffering complete and the price paid. And we are the ones set free. We are the ones given hope and life through all he did. So this week, don't rush ahead to the ending. Take time to be in the moment as the week's events unfold. Understand what Jesus suffered for you and for me. And that he did it willingly. That he accepted it out of love for us. And see that this is the guarantee, the assurance of God's love for us. So that even when we feel battered by life, when we don't understand, see that Jesus accepted the cross for us and that that is the measure of his love. So as we go through the week, may it lead us to humble acceptance and love and worship. Amen. We remind ourselves of the reason for the cross as we sing Who, O Lord, could save themselves? Thank you.
thanks to all those who took part in our service today. If you have any questions or feedback about today's message, you can leave comments in the YouTube chat or you can get in touch with Gavin, our pastor, by emailing minister at wpbc.org.uk. I'm going to conclude our service this morning with some verses from Paul's letter to Philippians. So let's pray together. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Well, God bless you all, and don't forget to join us on Zoom for refreshments in a few moments. The details will appear on the screen below. See you soon.